What's up guys, we are here today for our very first team builder for the UPA. Season 5, week 1, we are up against the New York semi Pours, Hasty Swampert, and this guy has a pretty threatening team offensively. A lot of Pokemon that I can't switch into really well, you guys will see, uh, I'll just bring up my team right here. Uh, as you can see, we have Weavile, Chestnut, Latias, The Blade, Seismitoad, and Entei. I'm going to explain all the picks, but on the right side of your screen, you should be seeing his team. I don't know if I went for a list or for sprites or what I went for, but uh, you guys are going to see his full team on the right side. It's Keldeo, Darmanitan, Bronzong, Flygon, Togetic, Levany, Mega Ampharos, Roserade, Snorlax, Sigilyph, Absol, and Delibird. So, at first glance, his team is really destroyed by Weavile. Then you look again and this guy's got a Bronzong that he can have a Cobra Berry on. He has a Keldeo which switches into pretty much any move that I can go for. A Darmanitan which is usually runs Scarf. It could also be Life Orb but pretty much if it's Scarfed it just nukes something every time it comes in. He's got a Togetic which I believe can live any one hit uh, outside of being uh, Eevee Lightless. He's got a Levany, which is normally run Sash, Ampharos, which can take the hits on the physical side from pretty much anything that you throw at it. Uh, Roserade is pretty much the only thing that gets O-Code uh, by Ice Shard or Icicle Crash, of course, but he can run that Scarfed if he wants to. He has the Snorlax, which can take a low kick and hit back with a Drain Punch. He's got the Sigilyph, which is another Pokemon that's usually run Sash, the Absol that can take Dark Hits, uh, and the Delibird, which I don't think is, is going to come, obviously, because I don't have uh, too many reliable Hazard Setters. Well, I mean, I have Armaldo, Deancey, and Seismitoad, but uh, I don't think that two out of the three are obviously coming, so... Weavile does work his team in a way, because it knocks off items and it revenge kills Pokemon. I really want it to put in work against the Flygon, the Bronzong, the Levani, the Togetic, and the Ampharos, and the Roserade. Those are the six Pokemon that I think that Weavile has a very good matchup against, as well as the Snorlax, because I can low kick it as after it comes in on a knockoff. And we are supposed to be actually adamant on this set. Hold on a second. Let me just do that. There we go. And, uh, and yeah, so low kick, uh, adamant, uh, knockoff into low kick knocks out, um, knocks out Snorlax, I believe, from full, uh, or after rocks, but basically the game plan for this week is going to be lead properly, uh, against what I'm thinking is either going to be a Bronzong or a Flygon lead, uh, Flygon isn't too great against my team because of the Weavile, because of the Seismitoad, because of the Latias, so if it's not really Scarfed, it's not very good, uh, he has a limited amount of Hazard Setters, of Rock Setters specifically, being uh, Bronzong and Flygon only. So he has to bring one of the two if he wants to damage my Entei and my Weavile. So I want a good lead against both of them, and Weavile is that lead. Alternatively, I can also lead with a Pokemon like Entei. So I'll just jump right into Entei because originally Entei wasn't supposed to come, but he is our offensive backbone outside of Weavile. Excuse me there. And uh, yeah, so we need the Sacred Fire. I pack Bulldoze for the Mega Ampharos. Flare Blitz just to have another powerful stab move if we run out of Sacred Fires, and Extreme Speed to pick off things at the end of the game. And Extreme Speed is more than likely going to be my win condition with this Pokemon, uh, with this team actually, and it's going to be basically just weakening all of its Pokemon down to the point where Bandit Extreme Speed just sweeps, so I don't even have to worry about rocks that much. And uh, as you can see, um, he has a Bronzong, which uh, like we said before is a potential lead, but he can run it Heat Proof, and Heat Proof takes one sacred fire uh if it doesn't get burned it, it potentially could take two i did run the calc i think it does like 48 min and yeah so he can live a sacred fire and get up his rocks guaranteed the thing is i have a reliable defogger that he has i mean i wouldn't say a tough time switching into because if he switches into his absol on my latias then yes he has a pretty good uh general matchup against it uh, he can just pursue me and kill me, but if I get his rocks off after his Bronzong is gone, then Entei and Weavile just have a field day. And my other potential lead against his uh, Bronzong is going to be my Seismitoad, and Seismitoad pretty much gets up rocks as well. 
And that's something that I really need to do in this game is get up rocks because they're going to be able to break potential sashes on anything but the Sigilith. They're going to just weaken the Darmanitan to the point where it can't uh, it, can, it, it can't come in multiple times. And Seismentor is also my answer to Darmanitan. This is a physically defensive. Why is this specially offensive? Hold on a second. Why am I running this like this? Oh, I know why. Because I changed this team. Uh for the live that you guys saw the other day. So this should actually be 252, and the last remaining four should be in special attack. There we go. And uh, that's why these sets are all messed up, but Entei's set is correct. Uh, this is what it's supposed to be. And uh, Seismitoad is uh, is correct as well. These are these are the moves that I want to run on it. And uh, actually over Sludge Wave, I think I'm going, no, Sludge Wave is good for the Togetic. Yeah, that's what I wanted it for. Okay, so Stealth Rock, Scald, Earth Power, and Sludge Wave. And this thing takes hits from the Darmanitan because it is physically offensive. We've got leftovers, so he can never really Flare Blitz me. He has to repeatedly go for U-Turn, because if he locks himself in a Flare Blitz at any given moment on my Seismitoad, then I can predict a switch into any one Pokemon and get a kill with this thing. And it's extremely powerful. Water Absorb is also, the, this thing is also a wall to anything barring uh, specs Keldeo locking itself in his secret sword. I can take any other hit. Uh, as well, I have Water Absorb, so he will never be able to lock himself into Scald, which is the other good thing. So this thing goes really well in conjunction with Latias and the Blade, because Keldeo cannot touch us. He has to lock himself in, well, of course, if he is Specs or Scarf, uh, if he's choiced in some way, he has to lock himself into a fighting move to be able to hit Seismitoad, so I can play mind games endlessly. And I can go into the blade every time and then threaten to kill something. And he has to, yeah, he, it forces a switch into something. And if I can get off damage on the Darmanitan with a secret sword, or uh, if I can just predict the switch and double into something that takes uh, whatever I'm predicting to come in on, then that's, that's a, a victory for me for that turn. So the combination of Seismitone and the Blade is really good against the Keldeo. And then we have Raladios, which is our defogger, as we said before. I need the uh, Psy Shock for the Keldeo. I need the uh, max speed. Well, we weren't running max speed on this, I don't believe. We were just running uh, 240. Yeah, it was 240 just to be able to outspeed. And I think we were running 180 here and 88 here just to be able to outspeed the, um, the Keldeo if it's not scarfed. So, and we don't need the, the three extra speed points because he doesn't have anything that hits 350 on his team. So it's completely useless. Uh, this also outspeeds max speed Flygon. So this is, uh, and I, need, I have the Draco Meteor on there for that specifically. Obviously Togetic is a wall to us. And we also have the Healing Wish here, as you can see, because I'm expecting my offensive sweepers to get whittled throughout the game at some point. I will never let them take excessive damage if I'm thinking a, a super effective move is coming, but if I think it's just something like a Sucker Punch from Absol, or a U-Turn from Darmanitan and I switch into Entei, anything like that, uh, then I can Healing Wish back up that specific Pokemon later, and then we're good to go. So that's what Latias is there for. And finally, the last Pokemon I debated a lot, I was going to go with Armaldo at first. Uh, to be able to catch his Bronzong and set up rocks with that. Then I realized I, I definitely needed Seismitoad, and Seismitoad was going to complete the rock setting role pretty well itself. So I decided to go with Chestnut instead. And Chestnut is running the same set that you guys... Well, no, you guys didn't see this set in the live, I don't believe. Uh, but this set is tailored to take on Roserade that's not carrying HP Flying. He could very well bring a Technician, Life Orb, HP Flying... Uh, Roserade, but I have to scout for that. And if he brings that, then it can't touch the blade. And I can scout for that by first going into Chestnut on any poison or grass move and immediately doubling into the blade to test the waters for the HP flying. So this is a set that's tailored to do that. It's also got the spiky shield to be able to get leftovers recovery, be able to take on the Absol uh, a lot better. Um, we have spi we have spiky shield, we have spikes, which are really good. I'm going to be trying to get up my hazards and then later on getting rid of all of them and bringing in my sweepers. Hopefully that works. Uh, going to be setting up the spiky shield, uh, like we said on the Absol. Zen headbutt is there so that I can actually hit the Roserade back so it can't just stay in on me and set up spikes infinitely. Because normally Roserade walls chestnut, but luckily this thing gets access to a psychic move. He can also pack extra sensory, he can pack in power ice on his uh, on his Roserade. Basically, anything that he can pack on his Roserade that's super effective against my Chestnut means that the blade walls it. 
other than HP Fire. And that's where Latias comes in. If he's running HP Fire, then Latias switches into it every time. So, and I believe Chestnut takes a hit, fires back a Zen Headbutt, does like 70%, so after two Life Orb hits, it's down to 10. I can pick it off with an Ice Shard or an Extreme Speed, and we're good to go. And uh, the reason this thing doesn't get hit by Roserade is because it's got this awesome ability called Bulletproof, which is going to come in handy very often this season, I feel. And uh, I can run this thing offensive with like a uh, fire move, like Hidden Power Fire, and max, uh, max it out in Special Attack, and like take on a Mega Scizor because it can't hit me with uh, plus six bullet punch because I'm bulletproof. And that would be so heat. Like, I really want to do that at some point, but we'll see if it works out for this season. It depends on who I'm playing, but uh, we've also got the leech seed on there. That's just general, uh, general coverage to be able to, well, not coverage, but we can gain some health off of stuff. So that's really good. Uh, my biggest fear I feel in this match is his Sigalith because it can literally pack coverage for every single Pokemon that I have. He can run, uh, Psychic hits Entei uh, pretty hard. He can pack Energy Ball for Seismitoad, Air Slash for Chestnut, and Heat Wave for Deblade. So if I see Sigilyph, I have to be very, very careful about how I play around it. And I basically have to force him to break his Sash to knock something out. So I gotta be very careful with that. The Blade does get off a huge amount of damage with a Shadow Sneak, and it doesn't go down to one Heat, uh, heat Wave, I believe. I think we still take one if we're at full. So I've run some decent calcs. I think uh, I think we've got a pretty good team here. I'm not running any kind of crazy items this week because uh, I don't think I have room for it. I, I really, really have to go all out on this team, and I brought like my six top picks. So hopefully this works out, guys. Uh, you got to watch the battle tomorrow to find out how it went, but I'm really, uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, this is going to be our first league game, man. I really hope we don't disappoint. Let's go Montreal Habsols. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like down below. Oh, whoa, that mic came really close to my face. Uh, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you want to see the game tomorrow. Leave a comment if, uh, if you want to be part of my front office and give me help with team building. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks again for watching. Ciao.